Okay, the goal of this animation is to do the bouncing ball. So the first thing is I'm going to lay out, have two layers and label them, ball and background. Um, or it could be just ground layer. So making sure they're in the right order, I'm going to animate for 50 frames and I'm going to add a background to this. So for the background layer, I'm going to use just the box tool to draw something appropriate for a ground grey edge and some sort of ground textury thing. Um, God knows what. Yes, I think oh, I want to go grey, but no, we'll pick something equally hideous. Um, and then just do that down the bottom. Now I'm going to lock this layer so I can't affect it at all. So you can see the padlock column and just doing that. And finally, I'm going to extend the top frame, which is my ball layer, so that it covers the 50 frames. Get around to my ball object. I'm then going to make it some other color. Oh, let's go for a dark red. And the edge doesn't matter, so yeah, do that. Um, <clears throat> draw a circle, hold down shift so we make it sort of ball shaped. That's perfect. And this top layer, I'm actually going to modify and convert to a symbol, right? Okay for the symbol type. This is my basic ball. First thing I'm going to do is block out the animation. So at about frame 15, I want to make that ball hit the ground for the first time. Um, oh, whoops, I forgot to motion tween it. So back to the start, put it up high, jump along to say, I'll do it for frame 10. Coming down, hitting the ground. What I'm actually going to do is I'm going to insert, and if you right click on here, you can insert different styles of keyframes, which control different aspects of your object. I'm going to lock in everything because what I want to do is I want to use one of the features of one of the principles of animation which is squash and stretch. What I've just done is locked in three frames in a row because the little trick I'm going to pull is I'm going to jump to that middle frame, use the Q or free transform tool to squish it. If I zoom in, control plus and squish it, you can see it squishes top and bottom. I don't want that to happen. I want it to squish downwards. So I'm going to move the radio button which is the center circle to the very bottom of my object it adjusts the line accordingly, and I'm just going to get it to squish down. So as we can see, previous frame, full height. Frame there, it's squished. Post frame, it's full height again. Then jumping along to say frame 30, and I'll zoom out so I can get the animation in position right. I want this vertical height, vertical the horizontal distance traveled from that vertical. That's half my bounce distance, so I'm going to double that to get my second bounce, which should hit about here. Again, I lock in three keyframes recording everything. And some random elevator music for you. Coming back to the frame in the middle, I do a little bit of squash and stretch again. And then I would go on to, say, another 20 frames, so basically frame 50, and slide it along. Because your animation will be longer, of course, you have to animate for more stuff. So here, this is blocking out the animation. I've basically blocked out the animation so you can see the little squishes it does along the way. Now I need to get the curves right so you've got those arcs of bounce. And this gets really easy because you just use the black arrow tool, the, the selection tool with the, which is required on the V key, and you just grab those curves and slide them around. You can't do this too many times because Adobe Animate has some problems and depending on the, the kind of ball you bounce you want, so here's a fairly squished bouncy ball if I wanted to make it more like a bowling ball, I could actually pull those heights way down. And each it's a consistent height change for each one. So something like that gets that happening. And the trick here I'm pulling is that between in these frames here, there's a little bit of squash and stretch. If I just push that a little further to make it a little more extreme, it will show up in the animation a lot better. See, there it is. So if it's something like a bowling ball, it'd have very little squash and stretch. If it's something like a, um, a super ball or a squash ball or a basketball, it may have a lot of squash and stretch. And that's the end of this training video.